few months ago when I reviewed the MSR Explorer gear, I said that it was the replacement for the revered ARC Battleborn gear in terms of being the best entry-level adventure dual sport riding gear out there. And it turns out I was wrong, but only because I didn't know that this MSR Voyager gear was coming. This is the MSR Voyager jacket. These are the MSR Voyager pants. I've had them for several months now. Done some very rigorous testing, driving rain. Uh, I've worn them on multi-day trips, gone camping in this stuff, and tried to test it as much as possible. Because one of the focuses of this channel is finding good entry-level gear and motorcycles and everything else for new riders. And I gotta say, I don't think that you can beat this Voyager gear in terms of value for your money for entry-level stuff. The jacket runs $249.99. The pants are $199.99. That is a full set of gear for less than $450. That is not nothing. I'm not saying that's chump change, but it is way cheaper than anything out there that's even half as good. So the jacket and pants are made with a heavy-duty main body construction with a TPU waterproof coating rated up to a 10,000 millimeter water column that's pretty waterproof. I did a little research on the material, the TPU waterproof coating, and it's what they make like Zodiacs and inflatable boats out of. So it's designed to resist UV, it's designed to stand up to abrasion, and designed to last a long time. And as a result, it has kind of a stiffness that we'll talk about, but it's a decent quality material and a great way to get uh, waterproof, durable stuff for a reasonable price. You got reinforced fabric overlays in the shoulders, elbows, forearms, and the seat of the jacket. I emailed to ask, because it doesn't say on the website, and it's 500 denier plus abrasion resistance across the board. CE level 1 adjustable elbow armor, CE level 1 shoulder armor, CE level 2 back armor, water resistant YKK zippers, it has a mesh liner, two intake vents on the biceps, two back exhaust vents, collar holders for increased airflow, four pockets on the front, one large rear hydration pocket with a hose outlet, two ID pockets on the forearms, two zippered inner chest pockets. It's got high visibility reflective elements and logos. There are waist adjusters on the jacket, forearm adjusters on the jacket, Velcro cuff adjusters, you can see here on the jacket, and the collar is adjustable. It's a cinch collar, so you can pull on the cinch on the back and tighten it way down to keep rain from running down your neck and into your jacket. The pants, same thing. CE level one adjustable knee armor, which is removable. There are hip armor pockets. It has a ratchet waist closure, adjustable Velcro waist straps, two waist pockets, one thigh pocket, reflective elements. It has leather on the inside of the knees, more protective, especially where you come in into contact with exhaust components and also just where you wear out your pants more, so it's nice to have that extra protection. It has a zippered gusset on the bottom of the leg and one of my favorite features, snaps. So it's not just Velcro closures, there's multi-position snaps on the bottom of the legs for making it fit to your boots and they're designed to fit over ADV and motocross boots. Fit-wise, it's American sizing. I'm a 2XL t-shirt, this is a 2XL jacket. I'm about a 40 waist, these are size 40 pants. So none of this you got to buy a 3 or 4 XL when you wear an XL t-shirt like you see with some European brands. So those are the features. What do I like about this gear? Well, a lot. The value for your dollar with this stuff is completely off the charts. It is very, very good gear for the money. And just as an example, as a comparator, I went out last year and bought a set of Sedici Garda gear from Cycle Gear. No disrespect to them, it's just what I bought because it was inexpensive. It cost the exact same amount of money. And the first time I used it, I got soaked through head to toe and ripped the cuffs in the liner on both legs trying to put it on over my boots. This stuff I have worn and used extensively, hundreds if not thousands of miles and have had zero issues. It's very sturdy, has stood up incredibly well, and the value is just really, really good with this gear. The old adage says that if something is cheap to buy, it must be cheaply made, and that's true except when it isn't. This stuff is cheap to buy, but it is not cheaply made, in my experience. It has premium features you just don't see on gear that's inexpensive. The jacket comes with back armor. I have multiple $500 jackets that didn't come with back armor. You usually just have to mentally add $80 to the cost of the jacket because you know you're going to have to go out and buy an extra back armor pad. This came with flexible back armor built in. Not a foam pad, nothing like that, actual back armor. The build quality is solid throughout. There's double stitching all over the place. The direct venting works incredibly well where there are vents, so we'll talk about that a little bit in the con section. This is an excellent standalone waterproof shell. It is what it is and it's nothing else. There's no zip and liners to deal with, no muss, no fuss. You throw it on when you want to block the wind and the rain and you want to be protected in case you crash. If it's cold out, you're going to have to put on something underneath it. MSR sells a mid-layer, which I like a lot. 
lot, but I'm guessing you probably already have a hoodie, so uh, you can do that in multiple ways. I prefer a waterproof shell like this. I prefer to be able to layer up. I find it simpler and easier, and this is a great example of it for a great price. I love the snaps on the bottom of the cuff. I have very expensive gear that doesn't have snaps on the bottom of the cuff, just Velcro, which always works itself loose over the course of the day. Snaps and multiple adjustment points on those snaps, something I really love, so excellent. There's actually snaps all over the place. There's hold back snaps here at the collar. There's a snap at the bottom for when you're zipping it up and keeping it closed. All kinds of little features like that that I really enjoy. Sturdy sewing throughout. The closures are all very sturdy. This ratcheting buckle on the pants is a little interesting to get used to at first, but it works incredibly well and doesn't loosen up or anything. So it's really easy to get the pants adjusted to the waist size that you want and to get them on and off when you're taking them on and off or you're going to the bathroom in the woods or whatever. It's not a heavy set of gear and it comes with a hydration pack pouch built in. If you don't want to wear a backpack but you want to take hydration, you have a pouch built in. That's just not something you see on inexpensive gear like this. The knee and elbow armor are adjustable. Also, the direct venting, like I mentioned, is a revelation. A lot of times you'll buy a jacket and it has a ton of vents, right? It'll have elbow vents and front vents, but there's a waterproof liner inside. So the venting just goes right to that liner. It doesn't really do you any good. The only liner in this jacket is mesh, so when you open a vent, it's blowing air right through this mesh to your body. On a hot day, that is a godsend, and this thing flows air incredibly well considering how many vents it has. And the thing is, you can just tell throughout, and I know some of this from talking to my contacts at Rocky Mountain, that this is gear that is tested and refined and has features that riders want and need. The Rocky Mountain guys prototype something, they go out, test it, they come back, give feedback, change it again. They can do all that at their facility in Utah. And beyond that, they're continually improving improving and refining designs as gear comes out and they get more feedback from people and it just feels like somebody set out to create great entry-level gear that doesn't suck and that's what I think this is. But it's not perfect so here's what I don't like about it. It's waterproof but it doesn't breathe much at all. That's what you get when you don't have a liner like Gore-Tex or Event or something like that. However, you have excellent direct venting so you can get airflow even when it's raining. It's just a trade-off there because while the zippers are waterproof, when they're open they're slightly less waterproof. Shocker, I know. It's not great in super hot weather. No real waterproof shell is in my experience. There's a compromise, a trade-off there. If you make something comfortable in hot weather, uh, it's gonna not be as great in wet weather, but I wouldn't wear this setup over about 80 degrees, but I always switch to a fully vented or mesh gear setup in the summer anyway. So it's not gonna be your one set of gear that's gonna last you all year, but it's perfectly acceptable depending on where you live, for here anyway, for the fall, winter, and spring. And then at the very end of spring when it starts to get hot, I'll switch for the summer to like a mesh gear gear set up and then back to this as soon as fall kind of comes around again. There's no liners included so you have to provide them for colder weather but like I said I'm guessing you already have a hoodie laying around. The jacket feels pretty stiff which gives it kind of a cheap feeling when you first open it. It's still pretty stiff. It's definitely breaking in the more that I wear it, but when you take it out of the box, you're gonna be like, holy crap, this is stiff. I've never had that feeling with other gear, even the less expensive gear that I've bought, but I think that just means it's better, and they're trading off that little bit of comfort for functionality and durability. That's my impression, I'm not a you know, material scientist. Still comfortable enough to wear around camp. I'm wearing it right now, just standing here talking to you. I set up my tent and everything wearing these pants on my last trip. So it's stiff and weird feeling, but it's not gonna stop you from doing what you need to do. And honestly, you don't really notice it other than it makes a lot of noise, like a pair of corduroy pants when you're walking around in it. Don't like that there's no short sizes for the legs. I have a large waistline and short legs and it's just really hard to find gear. So the legs will bunch up at the bottom if you have short legs like me, but at least the knee armor is adjustable so you can get it where it needs to be. Also, hate, 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 you guys are probably tired of hearing me complain about this, the damn crotch gusset. Again, I understand the purpose. It's supposed to keep water out if for some reason I get soaked all the way up to my crotch. But in practical use, all it does is get in the way when I have to pee. And I pee five times a ride and I get soaked up to my crotch almost never. That's a peeve of mine, maybe you don't care. There's no zipper connection between the jacket and the pants. I do not understand why they don't just add a damn zipper for that. So I've had to add suspenders to this like I do with all my gear. These are those Dutch fireman suspenders I found that work really well to hold my pants up because they get pushed down because I have a gut because I'm above average size person. I guess, I don't know. I would like to have a zipper in the back to hold my pants up when I'm getting on and off the bike and stuff. Seems like an easy fix and a huge oversight. And the pads that it comes with in the hips are foam. 
and they're not very thick. This is better than nothing, but barely. Now you're gonna wanna upgrade that to some actual molecular armor hip pads or something like that. But for the price, it's hard to complain about that. So speaking of price, you're probably asking, how can this gear be so good and so inexpensive? If it's cheap, it must be bad, right? Nobody else has good, cheap gear like this. And I agree with you. And the reason for that is, and this is mostly speculation based on what I know about the industry, but Rocky Mountain has a unique business model. There's no distributors or retailers for them to deal with. They're the manufacturer and the retailer, which means there's no middleman taking a 30% cut, which means they can offer those savings to us as consumers and sell good gear cheaper. And it's why all their Tusk stuff is so good for the money. In my experience, I've yet to use a Tusk product that I was like, wow, that's garbage. It's all good stuff, good entry level stuff. Is it as good as a $2,000 climb Badlands suit? No, but if you're just getting started, you need good gear that's gonna keep you dry and safe while you're out there riding and eventually you're gonna upgrade, but you want something that's good in the interim, it, you can't beat this stuff. You can't, in my opinion. So what's my conclusion? What is the crux of this review? Well, I said it at the beginning, I think it's the best value in not only ADV or dual sport motorcycle gear, but maybe motorcycle gear in general. I would not hesitate to recommend this gear to new riders. And in fact, I think it's the best gear for new riders who are not looking to break the bank, who just got their first bike, or even if you're rocking something crappy like that Amazon Hawk gear and you're looking for an upgrade to something decent without spending a whole bunch of money, it's awesome. I really like it. I thought I would test it and then stop using it, but I've been wearing it a ton lately. It's just easy to throw on and go and not think about. There are cheaper options out there, but nothing as good. And that's all stuff that you're gonna buy and use like that Amazon gear I mentioned and end up upgrading anyway, because you're gonna find the limitations of it. It, or you're gonna just realize it's not really protecting you and this stuff I just I'm not seeing it I wore it in a torrential downpour and didn't get wet at all it does the job for the money and I'm just really impressed with it there were several people at this year's dork in the road camp out wearing this stuff and nobody had any complaints about it I went around and asked every person that had it because I'm always concerned about recommending things to you and then them not turning out as good as I thought so I like to follow up where I can everybody had nothing but good things to say about this Voyager gear and if you go on to Rocky Mountain site the reviews it's five stars full five stars for the jacket and four and a half for the pants, including a review where a guy says he got hit from behind by a car going 70 miles an hour, flipped up onto the hood and uh, walked away mostly unscathed thanks to this gear. Hard to find a better endorsement than that. I feel really good recommending this stuff to you. I feel confident that if you crash in it, it's gonna protect you and it's also gonna protect your wallet along the way. There are some compromises because it's not top of the line gear, but in terms of value for your money, just good entry level stuff that's gonna work for you. It's hard to beat. Now, if you're looking for a more premium quality, buy it for life set of gear with more features that's a little bit more comfortable and you don't wanna break the bank, I really still recommend that MSR Explorer gear. Costs about twice as much, but it's on par in my mind with the seven and $800 climb jackets. And I have a full review on that. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it for you. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you're looking for more dual sport and adventure motorcycling content, gear reviews, and other stuff, because I'm the dork in the road and I wanna be your internet riding buddy. And I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. Thank you for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, thank you. Excellent!